okay recording this in the car as we drive to Concane, but uh, uh, this is uh, part two of the how the heck did I get here. Coincidentally enough though, and it's kind of funny, uh, you're about five times wealthier here in rural Colat than you are back in the state. So I'm about where I was with prettier ladies and better food so and better weather. So I don't know, did I get hurt? You could argue one way or the other, I suppose. But, uh, you know, so you get the idea. Um, and that's one reason I'm here. I mean, I, I basically had the Muay Thai trip all booked, had paid for. And uh, in the divorce, I kept the trip, uh, cashed in the return ticket, and just came here blind. Just Now, I'd studied Thai language and culture for, I think, over a year at that point, And I had several uh, close, very close Thai friends that I talked to almost daily. So I was absorbing Thai culture and really learning tons and tons about it um, for a long time. So as I've been here, I've closed out you know, a year and a month here now or whatever. Um, I have another year and a half kind of on top of that. So in another three or four or five months, I'm gonna say I got three years of Thai experience. So in one way, am I a noob? In the other way, do I maybe know a couple of things? I, I, as far as the channel goes, I know I get a little excited. I'm kind of an animated guy and all that, but I mean, I I, I am constantly editing what I say in, in real time as I speak it, and then I go back and I edit, and some of the videos, I go back four or five times combing through them and just making sure that everything I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying it the right way or in a respectful way. Uh, there's a lot of editing because we're dealing with the people, the culture, potential sexism, and, and all kinds of things. So... Uh, I, I try to really, while keeping it very from the heart, uh, respectful to everyone. My, my intention is to never hurt anyone's feelings, and you know, it's not a realistic goal, but I'll get as close to that as I, I am, by my limitations, uh, capable of doing. And so, while I was making myself happy back in the States, I, I'm college educated. I've got a degree in, in uh, engineering and construction management. I studied those things. Uh, um, graduated from Michigan State University. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a relatively bright guy. Graduated number one in my program. Got a big award for all that. I had no idea it was coming. I had to drive home, get a suit, and come back the same day. You know, whatever. Uh, they made a big deal out of it, and that was fun. They had a big banquet, and I got a plaque and all that fun stuff. So, you know, whatever. In the end of the divorce, I just threw it out. What am I going to do? Carry my plaque around the rest of my life? Go, look, I was somebody once 30, 40 years ago. Who cares? So I tossed all that stuff. Uh, you know, I used to have a big wall of ego. We used to call them back in the 80s in my office. You know, the back wall, I had my degree and uh, awards and my patents all framed and, and you know, uh, photos of me opening. I had a, a couple of different shops in early days and bigger days when I, my factory kind of wasn't big. It was a small factory, but technically it was a factory and not a shop. It, it, we hit, like, small factory status at one point. And, uh, you know, uh, and all that big wall of ego stuff, I, I, that's all gone. I just tossed it. I, I'm not a super sentimental look back on it. I can't live yesterday. I can't live 40 years ago, nor would I want to. Uh, everything is about each day and tomorrow and all that. So, But, uh, yeah, I mean, a happy guy, an educated guy, uh, fortunate in many ways. Um, I'm very close with my son, and that's, that's an issue. Uh, I miss him, but the relationship is very solid. Um, uh, you know, and then despite all my preparations... Coming here was uh, rough. It was rough, uh, way rougher than I expected. Um, I actually went to, I'll, I'll say it, because she's on the channel and you know who she is, so crew you see she's a good friend of mine. And uh, uh, I've known her for two and a half years now. And uh, um, she's a very kind-hearted person. And uh, I came to her and I was very upset. I was very distressed. You know, I said, I'm in culture shock. I, this is just tough. And uh, I could not understand um, uh, why people around me were speaking Thai Kolat and speaking it rapidly, not making any, not 1% accommodation for me as a new speaker, just not, apparently not caring, not even 1%. And, and, and that was very frustrating. And I, I, uh, I, in the city of Kolat, I have a Thai friend there, and he's the opposite. He's super Jai D, and he's super accommodating. He's the, like the reaction you would expect from somebody else. Sympathy, empathy, you know, all that. Don't get that out here. Um, here, it's up to you. Leo de Kun, it's up to you. You, you do it. 
Uh, I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's just the people I know here. Uh, just this particular area, rural, it's most likely a combination of those factors. Um, but you get into a very rural environment and, uh, you know, when I landed here, you know, my, 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 my uh, Thai wife, Fawn, her, her mom really did not know what to make of me. And it was not a warm welcome. It was not a warm welcome uh, at all. Uh, she barely, barely spoke to me for a very long time. Uh, her dad was very nice to me. Kun Pa is just, I think, J.D. with everyone. Uh, uh, Kun Pa also surprisingly, and I don't know how, and I think Fawn doesn't even know how, but he has some, some real experience with foreigners, and foreign men it must be. Um, he knows a bit about us and, and, and understands us a little bit and, and has no issue with, with foreigners. And I don't think he has issues with anybody, but personally, I think if Charles Manson was back, he'd be, oh, well, that's cool. Let's go work on my rice farm, you know. But, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, uh, so Kung Paul was always really cool, but, but the mom who really kind of runs things uh, day to day, um, she wasn't having it. Uh, after a while, though, uh, it switched. It switched, uh, um, and now I have earned a good reputation. I'm going to say that. I'm going to claim that. I don't like to make too many claims. I'm going to. I'm going to say that I, I believe I have a good reputation here. And the reason I say that is, is we were just at that fireworks show, and 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 uh, that that fellow doesn't get along maybe as well with his Thai wife's family, and um, uh, and and the families know each other. If the, the Thai families know, know of each other and know each other a little bit and there's some, I don't think blood relation, but, but there's some long time friendships kind of stuff. They, they know each other pretty good. And so there's been a lot of jibber jabber back and forth about me compared to him. And, and let me just tell you, my stock is up. Um, and there's three or four other Falang around here and probably what the mother was thinking I'd be like that because aren't all Falang the same. And uh, I mean, they don't really know us. That they're, I'm not making fun of her. They're, that would be something I would assume if I were her. Uh, whether they're from Switzerland or Germany or America, they don't see much different. We all kind of look the same. So they don't see a big, just so you know, we don't see a big difference between us. Um, and uh, the other guys here, mostly I think are alcoholics. I mean, not to be mean, but I mean, if you drink a case of beer a day every day, I'm going to define that by how I call it as an alcoholic. And maybe that's just a guy that drinks an enormous amount. And you can draw that line if that you want to, and that's fine. I'm just going to call it like that. But uh, whatever. Uh, and they don't socialize uh, with the ties at all. And there's, I've seen them be super rude to the local ties. I witnessed that twice. The one guy, not the guy with the fireworks, not that just another, and we're talking about people here right in my village. And there's three or four of them in my village who are just absolutely huge, huge drinkers. And they just sit behind their wall and drink all day. And I see them outside and they're drunk. And they will, they've never spoken to me. And they will typically not speak to the Thais either. They just like this and I don't know what their program is, but it isn't a good one, I wouldn't think. Anyway, so uh, I think they thought it was going to be like that. And, uh, now, my Thai wife has children, two boys, as you probably have seen. They're really good-hearted kids. And the one boy is, is really hard not to, to love that little kid. He's really cute and sweet, and he's smart, and he copies everything I do. If I'm out working out, he'll come out and, and do the stuff kind of with me as best he can. And I got my shirt off, he'll go and take his shirt off. And, you know, if I get something at the store, he'll ask if he can have something or like that, you know. And he just, it's really cute. And my, my Thai wife absolutely loves it, and the parents love it. And the parents are always pushing him towards me. And the other boy has got some significant emotional problems and, and uh, other social problems and lots of other problems. And, and, and uh, I just, I'm nice with him and I'm kind with him, but when he's completely and horribly disrespectful to me, and I mean, I have been disrespected by him like I've never had a grown man disrespect me in my life, at least not one I didn't knock down uh, afterwards. I mean, I'm not kidding. Uh, uh, and I've gotten harder with him on some of that stuff because that's just way out of hand. Um, I will not be a doormat to an eight-year-old. That's not going to work. Okay, end of uh, part two right here. And, uh, thank you very much. No, oh, thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.